Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Andrew Townsend. I'm an e-learning evangelist here with eLearning Brothers. Today, we're going to be talking about performance uh, performance support tools. This webinar will be recorded. We'll get a copy of it emailed out to all registrants later today. We'll also be posting it on our blog uh, probably early next week, so you can watch the recording at your leisure. If you have questions during the webinar, we will be ready to answer questions in the questions panel, so please do use that. Um, we'll also have a few uh, QA sections, so please do use that so that we can um, get your concerns, comments, questions uh, taken care of there. To talk to us about performance support tools, we have Jen Fairbanks, our senior instructional designer with us today. Thanks, Jen, for your time. I know you're very busy uh, with all of the, the work that we're doing there on the eLearning Brothers custom side. I appreciate the time that you've taken to, to come and help us. Also, just so you know, one of the things we like to do after the webinar is try to follow up as soon as possible. Sometimes it's just to get feedback. Most of the time we want to touch base and make sure that everybody's questions were answered. If we do end up having some unanswered questions at the end, we'll try to reach out to you and make sure that we answer the questions that uh, need to be answered. All right, and without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to you, Jen. Great, thanks, Andrew. Yep. So let's get started. And first off, we are going to get you engaged. Um, what are you hoping to get from today's session? And this, this is just more a question for me um, so that I can help drive and, and pay attention and maybe steer conversation a little bit more towards what you guys are hoping to get out of today. So our poll question, what do you want to get from today's session? A, I'm looking to, I'm new to performance support and I'm just looking for some ideas to get started. B, I've used performance support a little bit, but I want to be more consistent and effective with it. Um, I think a lot of us probably fall in that category. Uh, C, I'm raising, I'm already using performance support tools, but I'd like to raise my game with some new ideas or suggestions, maybe new um, ideas that are out in the industry. And D, are you kidding me? I wrote the book on performance support, but I had some time to kill in my easygoing, lazy kind of day. So go ahead and vote if you'd like to participate. We've got that poll up on the screen. I'll give you guys about five more seconds to vote. Um, but I'll tell you this, it looks like a lot of people are brand new to performance support oh, tools. Okay, great. All right, let's close it off. And here's those results. So 50% of our audience is brand new, looking to get in, getting ideas to get us started. Okay. Uh, about 27% have used them before, but they want to be more effective. 23% uh, are using performance support tools, but they like new ideas. And 0% wrote the book. That means they are probably all inv involved in learning and uh, development somehow. I've, I've yet to find a day where I've, I have a lazy kind of a day. Um, okay. So, um, as I was talking about this topic internally with, with our team and we were brainstorming a few ideas as far as what to share with, with you guys today, um, it was interesting. Based on the conversation that I had, based on the role of the person within the company, each person had a little bit of a different definition of what performance support was. Um, graphic designer had a little bit of a different view than our design manager um, and and even as I was mentioning this topic with with my uh, spouse um, he had a little bit of a different idea so um, to make sure that we are starting from the same same place let's go ahead and define a few of the key details so performance support when I when I talk about performance support what I'm referring to is task specific guidance, or support or resources in the moment of need. So when your either your learners um, and your learners could potentially be employees or in some cases maybe customers of your company, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, what support can you provide them in the moment of need that will help them address their issues, whether that be a flow, a workflow, a process, a procedure, maybe how to use the software, um, what can you provide them in that moment of need in order to help them address their questions and accurately apply the skills that they learned in training? And there are a couple of performance support um, performance support tools generally will um, have a couple of things in common. They'll be available on demand and they'll be controlled by the person performing the task. So it's something that they can get um, as soon as they need it, ideally. 
and they can um, essentially take uh, take the information as they need it. Okay, so although there, there are actually quite a few reasons why performance support is important for effective learning, but we're going to go ahead and focus on three primary ones. The first one is that it reinforces and supports formal training. Um, one of <laughs> one of the interesting things, um, and internally we've actually uh, been having conversations this week um, within our within our custom design uh, team about performance support and what makes it effective and what makes training effective. Um, and it's surprising. Um, the number of companies that don't either do this well or um, do it at all. And it's not because um, the training teams don't want the performance to be effective, they don't want the training to be effective, but it's kind of a missing piece. Um, and so when you think about training, when you think about the, the training solution as a whole, it's generally not a, it's not an isolated event. It's not okay. We're gonna put we're gonna put all of our employees through this training, and they're gonna magically learn how to use the software. And we're gonna release them out into the wild and, and allow them to help our customers, and and we're done. Um, it requires reinforcement, and performance support tools um, are a way to do that. Think about um, especially especially maybe if you're newer, or actually if you've been in the industry a while, you have a stakeholder that comes to you and says, you know what, I need a, tr I need a training created. The last one just wasn't effective. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm listening, I'm listening to phone calls of our, of our customer support agents and they're not doing what we train them to do. Um, performance support helps to reinforce the behavior and the skills that, that um, were learned in that training session. So whether that's a job aid, maybe a webinar, um, a podcast, something that the learner can listen to later, or um, maybe it's a quiz, a reinforcing quiz that's delivered out and allows them to be refreshed on that information. Um, it helps to reinforce and, and allow them to remember uh, that training later on. Second reason, performance support can save money, time, and effort. So if you think um, about the example that I just shared about that stakeholder that comes to you and says, we need to do training again. I know you just trained on it a couple months ago, but it didn't work. It's not effective. Um, how, frustr how frustrated is it for you as a member of the training organization or to the, to the stakeholder to have to come back to you and say, you know what, it didn't work. Um, we're going to have to put more time, energy, and effort and resources into training that thing that we already trained them on. Um, they didn't. They didn't uh, learn it the first time, but let's let's try it again. Um, if you take a little bit of extra time and and budget and and energy at the beginning, and you think about that performance support option um, before the training begins, and you get that put in place, it's going to save you money and and effort and energy in the long run. Okay, and then third, it's convenient for on-the-go workers. More and more of our workforce is becoming mobile, whether that's people working from home in their pajamas, whether that's um, people working late at night or odd hours. People want and expect um, their information and their answers when they need them. And it's not just a training thing, it's just in general, um, society has a lot of tools and, and technology at their fingertips um, and they want they want training to be the same. They ideally they'd like to go to Google or even even if you think about um, let's say you're learning to do something for the first time. Maybe you're learning to make a cake or you're learning how to build a birdhouse or whatever it might be. Um, you quickly go to Google and you, you type in your recipe or you type in how to build the birdhouse and, and it's right there at your fingertips. Um, and learners ideally want the same thing when they have questions when they're in the time of need on their job. So um, performance support tools can provide a way of, of doing that. Before we move on, um, for the veterans that have been doing this for a little bit, um, are there other reasons why performance support is, in, is important that, that you communicate with your stakeholders that maybe aren't part of these three? Maybe something that you communicate or a technique that you communicate ahead of time as you're discussing um, training as a solution. What are the reasons that you share to help get buy-in from your stakeholders that performance support is necessary for effective training? 
um, type your answers in the chat window if there's anything that you have found to be effective at, at gaining that buy-in and, and helping get that reinforcement post training we'll give people a little bit of time to, to type in their responses here um, we did have a question that came up a little bit earlier. You talked about uh, the control over your performance support mm -hmm. tools. Does that mean that you want your learner to be able to edit the resource or does that? No, more just um, control as far as when you think about training, um, uh, the way that I think about it is pushing and pulling information, kind of like when you go through an e-learning course, um, you don't necessarily want the information pushed. Uh, you want the learner to be able to access and, access and find it. So yeah, when I, that's a good question. When I talk about control, um, I just mean the ability to, to get it when they need it. Sure, okay. Um, more of the responses are coming in here. So cut down on questions to others on the job. Okay. Target specific behaviors and scenarios. Uh, sharing knowledge, moving mm -hmm. knowledge into action, uh, quality management, performance support tools help to ensure that processes are followed mm -hmm. to help them gain autonomy faster, make them more independent, uh, get folks in the practice of review over time. Okay. Um, there's lots more coming in. Also, ongoing follow-up that serves as a mentor and coach until behavior is automatic. Mm -hmm. A great way to see what areas employees are accessing more and perhaps struggling with allows greater fo focus on problemed areas. Um, it's a great way for that. Uh, it is the same way that people are learning today. They look for exactly what they need when they need yeah. it, thanks to the internet and Google. Um, give helps to give workers confidence. That's another one. Mm -hmm. Many of our users believe they can learn through job aids only without attending the formal training. Mm -hmm an interesting concern there. That is an interesting one. Uh, personalized learning paths, I like that one. Okay, okay, lots of great, um, and especially, um, especially thanks for, for those that are already using performance support tools and, and, um, and sharing those responses. As, as members of, of either training departments or, or um, vendors that that um, offer performance support services. It can be difficult um, to get stakeholders on board to, to put in the energy and investment um, to buy into performance support as, as um, being critical. So those are definitely great, uh, great selling points. Okay, let's do one more quick question and then we'll jump in. Uh, we'll jump into determining uh, if performance support is needed for the project. Um, for those already leveraging performance support tools, how do you determine if they are needed for the project? What questions do you ask in the beginning before you create a performance support plan? Type your answers in the chat window. What, what kind of things do you ask yourself or do you ask your team in order to in order to determine if performance support is needed for the training solution. And then we'll go over um, a couple of questions that, that we ask internally um, and we ask our customers. All right, these responses are coming in. How complex is the task that we're asking the learner to do? That's the first question that's come up here. Okay. Uh, how frequently does the user perform this task? What resources does the learner need after the fact for quick assistance? Okay. Um, how critical is the task that we're asking the learner to do? Um, let's see. Ob excuse me. Observation of task performance and discussion with management. What are the most urgent needs for performance? Okay. And uh, there's a lot of other ones, but they're very similar. They're all okay. very similar. Good. So it sounds like it sounds like some of you could have uh, written this webinar for me. Let's take a look um, at the five questions that I generally ask in order to determine if performance support is needed for the task. So the first one, how often will be the task be completed after training is complete? Um, oftentimes, especially in organizations where they're planning ahead of time, they know maybe a big initiative is coming out, but they but training needs to be done and but you know based on training and schedules and things like that, maybe you've got to train them a little bit ahead of time. Um, and if that's the case, how, 
what is the time between the time training occurs and when the task is actually performed? And if it's something that's more infrequent um, or the tasks aren't occurring soon after the training event happens, then you might want to consider a performance support. Some examples of this might be um, employees filling out benefit enrollment forms. That's usually only an annual thing, right? Uh, unless somebody has a life-changing event that, that would qualify for that. So annual benefits enrollment forms um, or performance employee performance evaluations. Uh, some, some companies only do it maybe biannually or annually. And so maybe... Um, managers might need a little bit of help if their performance reviews are done within a, a software tool um, that could be that could be an option okay the second question I use to determine if a task um, needs performance support is how complex is the task does it and, and this was brought up um, how complex is the task does it involve multiple decision points or multiple steps um, one of the examples, and this one was actually kind of an eye-opener for me, um, sometimes we think about experts being experts, and they're experts because they know how to do something automatically um, without thinking about it. It's just, you know, in their nature, and their DNA, they can do things without thinking about it. And one of the examples that Don Norman shared in his book, Things That Make Us Smart, is um, he talks about the cockpit of an airplane, and in the airplane, um, Pilots have a million controls and buttons and levers and gauges to tell them how the airplane is performing and if they need to go higher or lower or, you know, raise their altitude or, you know, maybe slow down a little bit. Um, but within the airplane, they actually have a cheat sheet um, that they use and it's it's um, built right into the dashboard uh, to let them um, know the speeds that they need to maintain in order to, to navigate and land the airplane safely. And if you think about it, um, commercial airline pilots have gone through a lot of training, a lot of extensive schooling, hours within the simulator, hours in the actual flight with, with an instructor, and there, by the time they get certified, they're experts, right? They know how to land the plane, they can do it in their sleep, and yet they still need performance support tools like a cheat sheet or a job aid in order to help them remember. It's not that they don't know the information, but when you're trying to land an airplane, you've got a lot going on. Um, and just something simple to help refresh or remind remind even experts can, can sometimes be a value add. A question has come up on, yeah. on this. Does this only apply to task-related learning or can we apply it to soft skills learning? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I have I have seen it used in soft skills. So um, maybe, yeah, maybe it's something where somebody might be struggling with um, empathy and you walk, you can potentially walk a learner through the workflow of empathy. So the first quest, the first task or the first step in that process might be to acknowledge acknowledge the concern or acknowledge the, the feeling of the person that you know needs needs whatever kind of support and then take them through that workflow that's that's a great um that's a great thought and, and it's also been brought up that in general a checklist is a gentle reminder mm. it can be very very helpful whether it's in soft skills or in uh, task related training yep absolutely Check, <laughs> checklist i think um Checklists are, I don't want to say underutilized, but it's definitely, um, it's just another way of quickly glancing down at, at the steps involved and, and the tasks at hand to, to remind um, to remind learners what they need to do. Uh, one of the things that we have internally here um, as we create our storyboards, we have the last slide of our, our storyboard template um, we have a checklist that allows our instructional designers to go through that checklist and say, okay, did you do this? Did you do this? Did you check this? And it's not because um, we're not trained and we're not, we don't know what we're supposed to do. We absolutely know what we're supposed to do. Um, but sometimes you either miss a step or um, it's a gentle reminder of, of something that you know that you need to do that maybe you um, either forgot about or, or you knew that you were gonna come back to later. So checklists are great. Um, 
some examples, and we, we already talked about a couple of those tasks that require many decision points or multi, multi-step processes, whether that's either a task or, or soft skills or things like that, something where the learner um, needs to do a series of, of tasks in order to complete a process. Okay, question number three. Does the task require standardized, consistent steps to ensure the desired outcome? Is the learner required to follow the correct exact same steps every time in order to ensure the desired result? An example of this, and I mentioned this and alluded to this a little bit earlier, would be um, product assembly or implementation. So for example, if your customer offers the service that you offer as software, um, you might want to offer as a solution, and, and many companies are, are starting to do this, your customers will likely need some kind of support after they go through that initial training to help them get through um, get through and, and start utilizing the software. One, one example of this that, that quickly came to mind is um, Adobe, with the Adobe suite of products. Um, they've got webinars, they've got um, lots of job aids on their website. So if learners have a question about using um, Creative Cloud or um, Captivate, the, the authoring tool, or um, Photoshop, they can quickly go to the Adobe site, type in their, type in the issue that they're having or the question that they're having, and they can pull up a variety of, of things in order to help resolve the issue. Um, and the reason that's important, and, and that's also true from an employee standpoint, when it comes to satisfaction, whether it's a customer or whether it's an employee, um, but let's take the case of the customer. How likely is it that your customer, especially if they're purchasing your product as you know, software as a solution, how likely is it that your customer is going to continue to use your, your company as a service um, if they are frustrated with the product, they don't know how to navigate the tools, they don't um, get the desired result that they thought that they would get, um, maybe there's something that they missed in training or there's a step that they missed in training, um, that they just can't quite get it right. Chances are if they're frustrated and they're not getting the value and finding the value of what they need within that software, um, they're not likely to come back and, and um, continue to use the product. And that's also same, the same thing with your employees. If they're frustrated, if they are not able to get the results that they need, maybe they're having a consistent error message not because the, the product is broken, but maybe because they're not getting the, the right steps or they don't have the right workflow, they're going to be um, more likely to be disgruntled as an employee because they don't have the support that they need in order to apply and perform the tasks that they've been asked to perform. Some quick examples, uh, tasks are great uh, when the tasks are greatly impacted by the sequence of steps or um, like I mentioned, customers are using a new product for the first time and this is uh, definitely starting to become more prevalent and seen uh, with software solution companies um, because it is a value add and, and allows learners to get and customers to get more out of the software. A question four, is performance support needed? Does the task or information related to the task change frequently? Um, a great example of this is um, quarterly updates. So for example, if your company is a website and maybe there are things that change quarterly um, in, in one of um, my previous roles, the software, the, the site changed quarterly and they were often enough updates that um, we had to put out um, a list or, you know, depending on the extensive nature of, of the updates, you know, we would we would have job aids available or they would go through training and then we would reinforce it through um, job aids and things like that, make make the information available on um, a knowledge base afterwards so that uh, the learners had the ability to access the information. What changed? Why did it change? Um, talking points back to those soft skills type things. If they were changes that um, might impact our customers in a potentially negative way, um, we would put in talking points and soft skill talking points um, that the employees could quickly access to help walk customers through and talk customers through the changes, why the changes were made and, and the benefits and, and results that would hopefully come um, because of those changes. So 
Um, again, if, if the information or the task changes frequently enough that the learner might have a hard time remembering what those new changes are, you will likely want to do performance support for those changes. Okay, and this one was mentioned, and this one is, is a pretty big one. Does the task, is the task critical or does it have high stakes outcomes? And when I say critical or high stakes outcomes, think about things such as um, mixing flamm flammable chemicals or a security guard using an AED device for the first time, the defibrillators, um, or back to that, um, that one that I mentioned earlier with with a pilot landing an airplane, there was um, one of our one of our clients is looking at doing a, a training where um, their employees mix chemicals and in order to when they when they do this it's not really an experiment but when they combine some products together if the if the employees do the mixing at the wrong time or they um, perform it in the incorrect way, it actually is very costly to the company from a financial perspective. It's not that the, the chemicals are flammable, but the um, the actual mixing of the chemicals is, is very costly from a financial perspective. And if they do it wrong and they get it, um, they mix them in the wrong order, they are out a lot of money. And so um, that would be an excellent example of once they've learned how to the proper procedure for mixing those chemicals, um, they should have a job aid or you know performance support post post training in order to make sure that they're following along with those correct footsteps, or those correct um, process steps. Hey, before we move on, um, I've I've gone through five, and you guys already uh, mentioned some initially. Are there any other reasons why performance is um, important that you guys? Um, are there any other questions that you as a group ask um, at the beginning of an identified training need in order to define or determine if performance support is needed? Go ahead and, and put those in the chat window so that we can share, share those amongst the group. Or if you have questions um, on any of the five that we just talked about. And obviously this isn't an extensive list. Um, these are the ones that I most commonly use, but there's, there's obviously room for others. Um, so some of these responses are coming in. One person says that these could be in place of training. Mm. Another is, um, another question is, is the tool intuitive or is it difficult to learn? That could be mm. a, a, a good question to, to keep in mind. That's a good one. Um, while other responses are coming in, I, there are a few other questions that came in during this last segment. Okay. Um, where do you typically keep this information? Um, do you keep it in an LMS, in an internal intranet, somewhere else? Are these printed out guides? Are these online guides? Is this collected in the knowledge base of articles? Are these FAQs? That is a good question. Um, any and all. Um, it depends on where your organization is at. And we're actually going to, that's a great segue to uh, what we're going to talk about next. Uh, depending on, depending on, the level of support that's needed. It might require a knowledge base article. It might require videos. It might require um, a variety of things. So let's let's actually segue that um, into our next poll question. So let's say you just trained your new employees on your company's software platform that they'll use to assist your customers. What is the proper level of performance support for those employees? Is it a searchable knowledge base, job aids, micro learning webinars, or it depends on the task? Go ahead and mark your response in the poll. All right, while well, these questions are, uh, these responses are coming in, um, someone else brought up another question to ask. After training is developed, um, the regulatory changes that that are made mm. sometimes they require immediacy but not necessarily require to build a new course yeah that's a good one and um while we're thinking on that because that actually uh touches a little bit on on what um somebody else had had mentioned in their question um and something that was brought up earlier 
training may not always be the right solution, right? Depending on one of one of the um, examples that I mentioned earlier, let's say that there are maybe some simple changes to your company's website or simple changes to a workflow um, that don't require pulling everybody into a, a classroom session or creating a, an e-learning as, as much as we obviously love creating e-learning courses. That's not always the right the right solution or right approach. Sometimes a job aid um, or something within an article within a knowledge base is is the right approach, and and um, you want to make sure that you're applying the right approach based on based on what is needed for the situation. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and show the results of the poll. Okay, great. Um, Twenty-one percent of our audience says a searchable knowledge base is the proper support. Okay. Um, Eight percent said job aids, eleven percent said micro uh, learning, only one percent said webinars, and sixty okay. percent said that it depends on the task. Okay, good. A good mix. Um, and and I'm I'm glad that there was such a good mix um, because the reality is is it it kind of does depend. Um, it depends on where your company is at, what they're currently, what tools are currently available. Um, if your company is able to do micro learnings and they're able to do quick videos that show two minute videos that show that process and allow the employees to maybe do a see it, try it type thing, um, that might be effective. Um, they might just need a job aid as far as what that uh, new workflow looks like. Um, or maybe it's a knowledge base. So all of those are potentially correct, um, and it depends on it. It really does depend on what the learner is trying to do. So let's talk about um, performance support tools and and what some of these options might be. So the first one is a searchable knowledge base. Um, ideally, a searchable knowledge base will allow your learners to just quickly kind of kind of like Google. Google is the ultimate searchable knowledge base. Um, you quickly type in a topic or a content or a concept or a question and it brings up a result. Um, the more obviously the more dialed in the knowledge base is, the easier the, lear the learner will be able to find what it is that they're looking for. Um, and one of the, whether that's either in an LMS or maybe it's an, an internet website, um, there's a lot of potential options that can happen in there. Um, one, of the, one of the nice things with a searchable knowledge base is you can potentially house a lot of, a lot of different types of performance support tools within, within that particular tool. So for example, um, maybe within your knowledge base you include a process map as far as what the steps are for the new process or procedure. You could potentially also include webinar videos, links to the webinar videos that that link them out. They just type in um, whatever whatever the topic is of, of the new thing that you, you just train them on, and it comes up with a variety of things. So it's not um, knowledge bases uh, can be can be very helpful, and you can put a variety of, of different things within the knowledge base. They're they're a great resource. Interactive PDFs and eBooks. Um, these uh, these are similar, I think, uh, obviously they're different, but the the benefits of a searchable knowledge base with interactive PDFs and eBooks, um, they're more text driven, obviously. Um, if learners maybe need just a quick reminder, this might be a good example for um, soft skills type tips. Maybe, um, for example, let's say you do a training on empathy and you want your learners to be able to access quickly some suggestions on correct phrasing or uh, reminders for them for tone or um, nonverbal nonverbal cues. Maybe maybe you put a list of, of those things in a PDF or an ebook that they're able to quickly access or read through to give them some examples of, of ways to properly show empathy. Um, that's, that's a suggestion that um, and, and something that I've seen done in the past. Job aids, uh, and this could be things like infographics, uh, checklists that we already talked about, reference sheets, um, things that they can quickly scan um, to see a process, a, a flow, a procedure. And um, 
kind of back to that question that I asked just a, a moment ago, there's not necessarily one right solution. It's a combination of solutions um, depending on where the learner is at and what they need to what they need to accomplish. Maybe they use a job aid checklist or an infographic to get a high level overview of the steps is just a quick reference, but maybe for a particular part of the task um, where they need to, they want to see somebody um, actually or hear somebody um, correctly display the proper tone for an empathetic statement. Maybe you have those as, as snippets within, you know, within um, the knowledge base that they can quickly access or within a webinar that they can quickly access. It's not just necessarily one right thing. It might be a variety of things. Mobile apps. Um, mobile apps are, are starting to become more prevalent. Uh, and when they're done correctly, um, they can definitely be very helpful. This is especially true. Um, one of our one of our clients, um, they recently launched a new um, a new training platform and they are leveraging mobile apps for that training platform. Um, and some of the things that they have included in there is is a wizard that helps direct the learner. Um, based on the information entered, kind of like a, a searchable knowledge base, um, but it's a web app that they've um, that they've designed. Um, also within that mobile app realm are reinforcement assessments. So, for example, uh, mobile coaching or mind marker or track um, might be examples of of mobile apps that can help reinforce that learning on a on a either a daily or a weekly basis um, in order to keep learners um, reminded of, of common tips and best practices. Maybe, um, for example, one of one of the ways to potentially use leverage mobile apps and, and reinforcement assessments would be uh, the most common errors or issues. So, for example, um, if you deploy out a new um, a new soft skill strategy and you're commonly seeing employees getting a certain thing incorrect, you might, you can quickly push out um, a, a reinforcement of what that correct procedure is through that mobile app. Um, and they can access it ideally anytime um, for whatever those most common errors or mistakes are. And it, again, with all of these performance support tools, the idea is to make it available to the learner when they need it, when they're on the job, whether, you know, when they're assisting that customer with, you know, an angry call, or if they're installing um, installing a vacuum system, or whatever it might be, whatever um, performance support they might need on the job while they're while they're in process, um, and mobile apps are great great for that. And again, we're with with technology um, and our our the world at our fingertips on our smartphones and our tablets and our iPads. It's just um, starting to become more common. That doesn't mean that it's a mobile app is always the right approach, um, but it is an approach that can be used depending on where your company is at and and what that uh, need is. Next one um, is micro learning. Micro learning. Um, is, is obviously getting a lot of, of buzz within the industry for a variety of reasons. And when it's like mobile apps, when it's applied correctly and in, in the right ways, it can be very effective. Um, micro learning, you can do decision making scenarios. So, for example, um, with things that require uh, let's say it's a sales sales training. You just recently did a sales training, and you want your learners to correctly ask for, make sure that the the, the employee or the salesperson is um, identifying the customer's needs first and foremost before they go into their their spiel about why why their product is the best, you want them to identify the customer's needs first, you can provide quick micro learning uh, decision making scenarios that allow you to reinforce what that correct process is and allow them to fail safely in, in that training environment before, before they're um, directly addressing customers or maybe while they're addressing customers. Maybe um, you have, have an employee that had a rough 
a rough contact and, and you know that you have something available in a micro learning, you can quickly direct them to that and, and make sure that they know that that support is there. They can go, they can watch that video um, or that animation about the situation or about the scenario and that can reinforce what they learned in training within, you know, two to three two to three quick minutes and they're off and they're on their way and, and they're ideally applying that correct process. Uh, webinars and podcasts. Um, podcasts are podcasts are also um, starting to become uh, pretty pretty common, um, and that those could you know also be potentially housed within mobile apps, things like that. Um, but again, podcasts podcasts are a great way again to reinforce and remind learners um, of common errors and mistakes and correct actions that they should be taking. Um, you know, maybe maybe while they're in the learning event, let's say it's an e-learning course and they correctly um, identified, let's say they correctly identified the right answer within the training course, but they maybe they don't necessarily know why it was the correct answer. And once they're out on the job, maybe they make a mistake and they tell the customer something or they make the wrong decision um, and they don't necessarily know why. Um, the webinars and podcasts can help um, remind them of what that correct, what that correct reason is, and that correct process is um, that they can quickly go through and and uh, watch the podcast or listen to the podcast, watch the webinar, and and help to reinforce what that correct what that correct action is. These last two that we're gonna that I'm gonna talk about are kind of the same. They're kind of along the same vein. Um, and when I mentioned earlier, ideally, the performance support tools are on demand and allow the learner to control them a little bit. These last two, and in fact, I'll um, reveal the other one right now since they are um, in the same vein. Dashboard communities and instant messaging tools like Skype and Messenger. Um, they're great. It allows learners to type in questions and ask um, you know maybe you've got a specific a specific chat setup where um, you've got either senior senior members of the team that can quickly address questions within you know the scope of their day uh, if you've got either new hires or, or somebody that's you know new to a particular topic they can type in their question and you can have an expert or a tenured member of your team answer those questions um, the hesitation that I would have, and, and the reason why I'm I'm putting them last, is they're they're on demand. The learner can you know obviously type their questions questions in whenever they have them, but you also have to make sure that there's a qualified person available uh, to answer the learner at the time that they need that information. So um, one of the ways, for example, one of the ways that we use um, instant messaging tools here internally at eLearning Brothers is um, we have Skype Skype chat windows set up for for uh, when we bring on new employees. For example, within our instructional design group, um, we have a chat window set up. Um, everybody, you know, all of our, our all of our instructional designers are within that chat group. And then um, when well, one of our new IDs or developers have a question about one of our processes, or maybe you know, just a general instructional design question about something um, related to our process, they can quickly type it in the Skype window um, and get a response back from, from one of the members of our team um, to, you know, help them through whatever that process question is. Um, so we, we leverage them here as well. And that's one of the ways that you could potentially leverage them. But again, it just it you need to make sure if you're going to use use that as a resource that you've got people that are are um, qual qualified to answer whatever um, you know whatever those those concepts are or whatever those questions are. Um, the other thing I like about the dashboard communities and the instant messaging tools is it um, goes through that idea of of social learning and it allows people to connect, um, especially if it's for new team members. Um, it allows them to connect with, hopefully with people that are on their team and allows them to network a little bit and, and get to know the people around them. 
um, even if it's even if it's through uh, Skype messaging, um, but it allows them to feel that connection with with other people around them um, to help them maybe not feel so alone and so isolated. So Jen, we've had a lot of questions come up okay. um, with this slide with a lot of these different types of performance support tools. Some people are looking for clarification or ideas or examples. Okay. Um, one of them is how important is ease of round trip navigation from the performance environment to support environment mm. resources and how have has eLearning Brothers dealt with that in their courses? Yeah, so obviously that's that's interesting that you say that. Um, so you, you want it to be easy, right? And it, it seems like it's a simple thing. Um, but if your learners don't know how to access the performance support tools or they're not necessarily clear on how to get to them, it's a it's a waste. You've, you've built that resource and you've made that resource available for nothing. So that that also has to be part of the training. Um, ideally, the, if especially if it's um, well, all of these are obviously online resources, but um, the fewer the clicks, the better. Um, if if a learner has to dive into a knowledge base and they have to go through seven clicks in order to accurately find the content or the topic that they that will resolve their question, they're not going to use it um, because people just, um, in general, they don't want to have to click that far in order to find the answer. They would rather just turn around and, and ask their neighbor or the new person that they that they may be met that might not have the right response. So um, ease of finding the answer and making sure that they know where to go, it has to be included as part of your training plan so that they're set up for success. And maybe that's one of the things that gets reinforced um, through like a, a daily email blast. Um, for example, if you've got new hires, um, and it wouldn't even necessarily need to be a daily email blast, but but for example, um, in previous um, in previous situations, we we have set up like a daily um, daily email that goes out to members of the team um, as far as trends and things that we're seeing. And one of those things that can be included in that is a reminder to say, hey, remember if, if you need to find answers or you have questions about topic X, Y, or Z, um, type this this field, you know, type this into the knowledge base and, and it will quickly find your answer. Or um, if you have, a, you know, if you want to practice this particular scenario about empathy, go go to this particular link or go to this particular place just so that they um, have have <laughs> performance support for the performance support, I guess is for lack of a better way of, of phrasing it. There's also been a lot of questions about the uh, mobile apps mm. uh, section. Do you have any examples or recommendations of, of ways to do this or software that you've used for this or ways to apply it inside of a, of a course? Yeah. Um, so the ones that we have seen here internally um, are are companies that actually have have built built the mobile apps on their own platform. Um, it it I've seen it a, a couple of ways, um, but primarily is is through companies that build the build the tools right within their own platform. Um, for example, um, one company. Um, launched launched a new LMS and it was built uh, as an extension as part of that LMS. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, I, I can follow up um, with that particular uh, with that particular client and see if there's a way that we could share that. Um, I don't know that that will be an option, um, but I'll see if if there are maybe some other examples that I can find uh, post. That's one thing that I probably um, can grab for for you guys afterwards when we send this link for the video out is is potentially some links to some examples of, of a, the mobile apps. Yeah, I mean, there's we have a way more questions than we can take right now about um, examples of these performance support tools. So what I'll do is I'll I'll just grab a snapshot of these pictures yeah. and uh, I'll send them to you afterwards and maybe That's we can great. get these out. If we can't get these out in the email today, we will get it out with the uh, the recap next week. Yeah, and one thing um, and. I, I've already, uh, I have mentioned this a little bit, but again, there's not necessarily one 
right way that actually segues um, into um, the next topic is there's not one right performance support tool. I mean, there are definitely performance support tools that are more effective depending on what the learner is trying to do, um, what you're asking them to do. But um, you have to start from where you're at. So if you're new to performance support and you're just starting out, kind of like when you learn anything, when you learn to ride a bike or when you learn to bake something for the first time or crochet or whatever it might be. Those are obviously um, some of my interests coming through. But um, when you learn to do something for the first time, you're not going to be an expert at it. So start small. Um, if your company doesn't have a big internet with a searchable knowledge base, um, maybe you start with a, a, a daily email blast or um, you send out uh, I, uh, infographic of the most common issues or, you know, make sure because that's because uh, that's one of the things that I've seen um, myself is if you go too big and you try to you do try to go from zero to 60 if your stakeholders aren't on board um, and you either talk them into it or they're not really, you know, they're not seeing the forest through the trees, um, they they may not be as willing to invest in it going, you know, later on if the first couple of rounds of, of performance support don't turn out well um, because it, it is an investment in, in time and energy and, and effort and resources in order to build the knowledge bases, in order to build and create the webinars and things like that, the podcasts, um, the mobile apps. So make sure that um, you start with the small things and then um, build up from there. You also want to make sure that you're implementing a strategy from the very beginning. This should be a conversation as you're talking with your stakeholders when you're identifying what those key performance indicators are when you're identifying what success for the stakeholder means to them. Um, you also want to make sure that you're talking about um, talking about your performance support strategy. What does it look like? What will learners need to be successful? And that doesn't, uh, we're specifically talking about tools um, and electronic tools and, and means, but that, that also might include Somebody mentioned this earlier, that might include coaching, that might include reinforcement, that likely will include coaching and reinforcement. Um, but make sure that you're having those conversations at the very beginning so that your stakeholders are on board and um, you're having that collaboration and conversation so that they really understand um, how performance support gets back to um, what they care about and having that strategy from the very beginning and knowing the direction that you're going will help you to get there. Kind of like when you're when you're um, putting objectives in your courses, um, you have to know what the endpoint is before you can uh, get the directions to get there. And I just mentioned this a little bit, um, but make sure that you link the goal for the performance support back to the value for all of your stakeholders. So obviously the value for your corporate stakeholders or the organization as a whole, they want to see whatever that improvement is. So for example, if, if you have um, a tr sales training and the organization wants the sales training to happen because they want to see revenue increase, make sure that you are identifying at the very beginning uh, what performance support needs to be in place post training in order to make sure that learners are applying the sales processes correctly or they are practicing proper empathetic statements or you know make sure that you link those back um, link those back to the correct value obviously for the learners they want to be confident and they want to be effective and they want to be able to apply what it is that they learned in the course so what um, performance support mechanism need mechanisms need to be in place for them to have as a resource for them to feel confident and, and confidence as they're um, as they're applying this new skills and then obviously uh, you as a, a training department you want to make sure that you're employing the right performance support um, based on whatever that need is uh, as a training organization you want to make sure that you're providing and, and showing your value and and being able to link back by saying saying and showing and demonstrating um, okay, because of, yeah, we did this training and, and we put all the 
pieces in place at the beginning. We trained them on the things that we were supposed to train them on, but then we took these additional steps. We we made sure that the, the job aids were available. We um, created a, a Skype chat window for um, new users to ask questions. We um, made sure that the content was uploaded into the database to make sure that it was searchable. Um, all of these things uh, can help show your value and then linking it back for when you're having that uh, post-mortem discussion to say, okay, yep, we were able to accomplish our, our goals and, and help revenue ri rise because of X, Y, and Z, because of, you know, we put these, we put these um, tools in place in order to help our, our learners be effective. And again, reinforcing that training is not just a single isolated event. It doesn't happen just within the context and the confines of the classroom training or um, the webinar session or um, the e-learning courses, as, as much as um, I, I would like to believe <laughs> that um, when learners walk away from a course that I've created knowing everything and, and being 100% capable, the reality is, is, is they're likely going to need that performance support once they, they will need that performance support once they leave the session for a variety of reasons that, you know, that we already talked about. Um, you want to make sure that you are connecting that back. Any questions on on this particular section? There's more and more questions about um, wanting to see examples of these. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure if you have those in your slide, but I will definitely try to get some examples of these in the email or the recap later. Yep. Yep. We'll, I'll I'll definitely grab those. Um, and and like I said. I want to make sure, you know, for proprietary reasons, we want to make sure that we're sharing examples that we're okay sharing. Um, and if if that's not the case, maybe, you know, we can mock up, uh, mock something up uh, as an example. Okay, any other questions aside from the examples of the um, performance support tools? Um, that you guys have questions on, anything else that we've talked about today that we can, uh, I can quickly answer for you. All right, some more questions are coming in here. Okay. Um, what type of performance support tools do you suggest for a call center atmosphere where it's mm -hmm. very difficult to schedule time off, uh, time off of the phone? Yeah, good question. So um, there's a, uh, I do actually have a call center background, so that's that's kind of right up my alley. Um, some of the things that we've used in the past, or that I've I've used in the past, definitely a knowledge base, searchable knowledge base. Um, you also want to have, um, especially if it's if it's um, soft skills. Soft skills are definitely important within the call center training environment have videos or clips that that the learners can listen to quickly you know if they have if there's a new policy that's been rolled out or a change to a product that that might um, cause some question or confusion by the customers um, have have those snippets available for for your employees to listen to to hear the proper explanation or description or conversation of what a good uh, what a good um, communication with the customer sounds like so that they can use it as a reference and, and model after it. Um, and then obviously, you know, uh, communication, the the, um, the uh, instant mes messaging type communications where you've got tenured, uh, tenured agents or or teammates that are potentially available and, and you could, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have to have one person on there, but maybe it's a, a handful of people kind of sharing that load so that um, there's at least a couple of dedicated, I don't want to say dedicated resources, because but, you know, somebody that's there that can answer questions um, and they kind of do it in shifts and things like that. So, for example, maybe, you know, you've got two or three people that take from 9 a.m. to noon and, and kind of switch off and rotate that way so that it you have that support, but it's not a big part of their day. Excellent. So there's lots more questions, and unfortunately, there's not lots more time. So okay. we'll just try to get to your questions um, in the follow-up. Okay. And then one thing that I will mention, um, we will probably be doing a few 
a few blog posts from this session today that hopefully answer some of these questions and, and that uh, we could potentially provide some examples um, and do a little bit of a, a deeper dive on, on some of these ones, these questions that we're getting um, more, more frequently. So um, be aware of that as well, more, more to come. Excellent. So let's, uh, let, as you can see up on the screen, you can schedule a demo to speak with our custom team and they're happy to show you uh, anything that you'd like to see that they're legally allowed to show you as far as, uh, you know, client, client work and things like that. Um, I do want to point out that uh, Jen is going to be at ELBX. So I if am. you want to pick her brain there, you can come and, and hear from her. Uh, that is on June 11th. That's coming up really quick. It's in here in Salt Lake City. Um, like we already said, you can schedule a demo as well. Visit elearningbrothers.com for more information about ELBX or about our custom side and uh, work that we've done for, for all kinds of people. Um, thank you so much, Jen, for your time. And thanks, uh, we'll hopefully reach out to all of you shortly. And thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.